Hi, my name is Amit Bansal and I represent Data Platform Geeks and Data Platform Summit. We are here in Data Platform Summit 2019, the fifth edition of Asia's largest data analytics and AI conference. And I'm excited, rather super excited and very honored to host Gail Shepard. Gail Shepard um, is the Corporate Vice President of Microsoft Azure Data Group. And uh, Gail, thank you for joining us in India. Thank you for joining DPS 2019. And thank you so much for keynoting the conference. First, to begin with India, how's your experience with India after so many years you're coming down for the second time? Terrific. So I've met so many wonderful people. I arrived Monday, it's now Thursday. I've probably met 100 people along the way that are customers, partners, uh, Microsoft employees, and um, uh, members of your conference here today. Um, I'm encouraged by not only the intelligence and the passion and energy that I feel, but also by the curiosity, right, the need and desire to share the wisdom of experience with each other and the sense of community that is ex exhibited here. It's very impressive. Thank you, thank you, Gail. And you have been meeting customers, partners, and audiences here. Um, would you compare in any ways how your experience with audiences here has been versus with global audience? Well, I would say your audience, uh, first of all, is very engaged um, and very much, uh, it, it's back to being a learning environment, a sharing environment, um, very engaged and, and participative in the discussion, which I love. Uh, so I can ask a question of a women's council forum earlier and the debate and the excitement around the question just rolls through the room and is very passionate. Um, so I, I think that might be one of the differences is there's such a great passion here to be to to excel and to achieve that I I see visibly right in a very tangible way um, that's one of the key differences I feel yeah and I know uh, we started working uh, together yesterday and today so it has been a, a hell of a, a day with you know the keynote and multiple roundtables so overall uh, till now well, terrific. So th this morning, the audience for the keynote was a, a overflowed room, right? We had um, standing room only, so to speak, uh, and, and terrific participation in the demonstrations that we did, as well as the customer uh, participation on stage with me. Um, I think the, um, uh, the amount of energy around the classes and the, the, the teaching that's occurring here and the learning is very, very positive and strong. And so well done to the DPS team um, on that, that front. Thank you, thank you, Gil. Um, now, um, before uh, uh, coming to DPS, you definitely would have some perception about the technical audience or, or the community in India and Asia overall. Uh, after coming to DPS, uh, has your uh, um, uh, the perception changed? Uh, or, or a follow-up question to that is, uh, previously, definitely Microsoft supports communities worldwide, and you would have your own uh, strategy to support communities in India and neighboring countries. And after coming to DPS, do you think now that strategy would change or that perception would change? Well, I think, I think it reinforces the perception that it's important to invest in the communities that we serve. I think about I think about just some of the, the global numbers about um, uh, 17 million partners. Uh, so Microsoft has a very large, extensive community of, of organizations that we work with. And so when we come here, we meet with them. They are here, they exist. And so by supporting uh, our local uh, global system integrators, uh, by supporting DPS, by supporting our customers in a local way, we have teams on the ground, but we also have experts that are virtually engaged. And so all in, I, um, um, my opinion didn't really change that much. Um, um, India has a strong presence in the United States, right? And I live in the Silicon Valley. So um, I, my expectations were perhaps over, um, uh, over uh, achieved in that when I, I, it's my first time in Bangalore. And so I'm so impressed with it as the Silicon Valley of India um, and the, the, just the vibe and the energy and the passion and the skills I'm running into are amazing. So that's probably the thing that surprised me is I didn't know Bangalore. Now I feel like in three days, four days, I've gotten a terrific introduction. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Gail. 
Um, uh, now, when, it, when we talk about skill upgradation, and I would like to tag along the student community, so India produces many engineering students every year, I mean, probably the, the largest student community in the, in the whole world, and even our tech community is supposedly one of the largest. So, and Microsoft, I know this year, uh, and I've heard Microsoft leadership speaking about their charter on skill upgradation. What are your thoughts around student um, skilling or skill upgradation, upskilling, reskilling, and, and the likes? Well, that's a big question. Uh, so Microsoft in general is, is very much invested in, in academia, bringing um, uh, interns and providing experience to, um, to students inside our own programs. Um, uh, the, the interesting thing for me about India is you have the, one, of the, one of the youngest workforces, if not the youngest workforces. And so we see a tremendous number of startups being established here at a very rapid pace. And so the skills that we're taking out of university, the data science skills, the machine learning skills, the, t and the general computer science skills, uh, as an example, are, are if they're not de being deployed and growing inside corporations, they're being uh, actually established and pushed into very entrepreneurial opportunities. And so a whole new generation of companies and technologies will be created here because of that. Perfect. Excellent. Um, uh, now, Gil, the, the whole world I mean, knows that you lead the product management uh, uh, efforts uh, in the Azure Data Group. And that is like the vision, the strategy, the customer experiences, and, and there are so many great products in this portfolio. Can you, um, uh, for our audience, can you let us know more or elaborate on uh, this, uh, this charter, this role that you have, which is product management? Right. Right, well, I love product management. When I was the CEO of, of my last company, Saffron, I, I always said, geez, if I wasn't the CEO, I would want to be the chief product officer. It's the best job in any company. And why is that? Because th it is the best job in any company because it, initially you start with, what, what, what problem am I going to solve? And why is it important that I solve it? What benefit or value will a customer acquire? And, um, and should I do it at all? You know, is it in, and when you decide that um, and you, you d decide to focus in on solving these specific problems, it becomes your reason for being, right? The reason for being is to create, at the end of the day, lovable and loved products that, that add value to customers, whether those customers are in consumers or their businesses, you know, trying to use your products for decision making, whatever it might be. Um, so product management starts with defining your reason for being. Um, it then moves to justifying that reason for being and validating it, uh, working with customers and end users to validate those ideas and concepts with them, uh, developing and, and defining product requirements, uh, the user experience, um, the user interfaces, the actual product uh, functions that have to be performed, uh, to define that, work with engineering to refine that so that's something that can actually be built and deliver products into the market. But while you're doing that, you're also working in the ecosystems. Do I need partners to help us deliver this to customers? Is it going to be self-implementable, uh, if you will, uh, when, the, when you ship the product to the customer, delivering it via, via the cloud? And so there are many questions that must be answered, and product management's role is to think through those questions and to, to form the answers, the uh, insights and answers to those questions, validate that with marketing, with the field organization, with the partner organizations, with engineering, uh, and onward uh, to, to create a go-to-market strategy uh, along with the product requirements that are ultimately going to be built. And those things come together to ultimately deliver and serve the customer. So it's a very important strategic role. It has vision and it has strategy and it has really important execution points that must be done. And one of the most important ones uh, in, in our world today is ac the actual interaction with customers and the end users and making sure that what you build will be used and creates value at the moment we start using it. I, I, can, I can tell you and the audience can tell that you're very passionate about product management. <laughs> Okay, so, um, you know, uh, it was great for us to have a woman leader being the keynote speaker for DPS, and it happened for the first time in our uh, fifth edition. So we were very excited, and we exclusively scheduled a Women in Technology Roundtable for you. So tell us about your experience with this uh, WIT uh, table today, uh, and uh, how can we as communities do better with, you know, women empowerment, diversity, and inclusion? 
Well, okay, so that's a loaded question, you know, but uh, Women in Technology Roundtable today was awesome. So I don't, I don't know exactly how many women we had, but probably 25 or so were in the room. And it was very much unstructured. So um, we did introductions and, and uh, learned a little bit about each other. And the first question I asked um, to provoke discussion was uh, the observation that I had not met many uh, women entrepreneurs in India not in the United States or here on the ground. And so the question to the audience or the, the team was, why is that? You know, and the answers came and the discussion followed. And so it was very active. And so uh, some conclusions that we would draw from that is uh, the responsibility that we have as individuals to take charge of ourselves. That we can't rely on other people to do that for us. We, yes, we need sponsors. Yes, we need mentors. But at the end of the day, if you're in a work situation that just doesn't do the, the, uh, allow you to accomplish what you need to accomplish, you need to change your work situation. Uh, so, uh, and, and you need to ask for the job that you believe you deserve or that you want or that you can accomplish. And so there's, there's some very, uh, um, very much some behavioral changes that we talked about in this room today. We, did, we decided not to draw prescriptive conclusions about that. These are just some of the observations we made. And what we decided at the end is that we're going to use Teams. We all signed up to be part of the virtual community because uh, the women in the room from, were from all over the world. And uh, we're going to continue these conversations on a monthly basis and then try to meet at least once or twice a year, one of them here at DPS. Okay. So <laughs> it was a terrific, really productive session. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, one last question. Um, what would your message be uh, for women who are currently not working? Well, if you're currently not working, it could be for a number of reasons. So um, if you're not working but want to work, then I would suggest you find um, uh, uh, sponsors in, the, in your community that can help you, uh, particularly if there's any indecision about what that is you should do, that can help provide you guidance. Now, sponsors don't have to be just women. Obviously, men are great sponsors. And so, uh, but I do think having a network and community around you to help you decide what to do and how to move forward is really important. There's so much online education today that to skill ourselves up for the next job that we want, uh, is much easier than it was 10 years ago or, uh, or even five years ago. It's just amazing. MIT, Harvard, Stanford, as you know, universities in the US all have programs that are amazingly important and helpful to, to, the un you know, to people who are not employed, who want to be, but also are in the middle of a career change while doing that. Um, so one, I would look for online education if you believe you need to be uh, reskilled. Uh, two, I'd look for that, um, the sponsors in my community. Three, I might look to academia, the universities, to help me as well. And then uh, four is decide what you want to be and what you want to do and pursue it. Right? Thank you. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, now after DPS, many know you and they look up to you as, uh, as an inspiration. So your words are of encouragement uh, matter a lot to them. So uh, Gil, thank you once again uh, very much for being part of DPS 2019. It was a privilege, a pleasure to host you. It was a privilege to be here. So thank you very much. It was an honor and a privilege. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You.